Hi, my name is Amberly, and I have the privilege of serving as one of our executive pastors here at Transformation Church. We just want to say thank you so much for tuning in from wherever you are watching from. And if you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe. We believe that God has a word for you. So let's jump into this amazing message. There once was a kingdom called Havania. Anybody excited to be in the house of God this morning? Come on, if you're online, let's just give God a hand clap of praise. I'm trying to control myself right now. We have guests in the building, but I'm about to act the fool. When we get together, it's just something special that happens. And I'm just grateful that everybody came to be um, a part of what God's doing today. I feel like I have a mandate from God to deliver a message that changed the trajectory of my life eight years ago. And one thing that I told God is if he ever gives me a secret or a key to the kingdom, that I would share it with as many people as I could. So, so today I need you to go ahead and get your notes out. I need you to go ahead and get ready um, because today we're starting week two of a series we're calling, help me, easy money. And, 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 and I need you to say it with a little swag on it because some of y'all, when, when we start talking about money, your booty gets tight and <laughs> you start clinching on the stuff and you start doing stuff. But, but culture and the world has made money hard. But when you do money God's way, when you do it how he designed for us to do it in the kingdom, somebody say, it's easy money. Easy. Say it with a little more flair. It's easy money. Easy. And, and as we approach today, um, I got a lot of content to cover, so I'm not going to play with you. You're going to have to write this down and go back and listen to it a couple times because this is going to change. Listen to what I'm about to say. Generationally, how your family interacts with finances. This message ain't for you. This message is for your children's children. It starts with you, but it ends with people you'll never meet. Somebody say, it starts with me, but it ends with people I'll never meet. Now, most of you right now, when I said that, selfishness rose up in your heart. Because like, if it ain't affecting me, why are, we, why are we even talking about it? If it ain't got nothing to do with me, the whole way God set this thing up, is you get blessed by the way. If you become a river and not a reservoir, you get blessed by the way. The, 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 even the, the thought of currency, current is the root word. Money is supposed to, everybody say flow. If it stops with you, if it stops with you, it no longer has a flow. And the reason that God has not been able to supply many of his people with more is because they stop the flow. Today, I want to unplug. I want to put some dynamite in the area of your life that's been damning up your blessing. And I want to bust a hole. Ooh, I feel this thing. I want to bust a hole in the thought process that has kept you in a place where you have not been able to walk in the fullness of what God has designed for every one of his children when it comes to the area of finance, stewardship, and generosity. So I'm gonna take you to a scripture that I need you to tattoo on your forehead. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24. Because anytime greed, stinginess, um, 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 only my four and no more, that attitude comes up, I need you to remember this scripture, and I'm going to read it out of the message because I like the way it says it. The world of the generous gets what? Larger and larger. 
I need everybody to do that with me. This is like playtime, like on a kid's show. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. Everybody didn't do it. What's wrong with your arms right over here in this section? Do we need to pray for miracles over there? Okay, I need everybody to do this, even at home, all the kids. The world of the generous gets larger and larger. One more time for all the people who, who, who need help. The world of the generous gets what? Do you see how you can't open your arms larger without it affecting somebody else? You missed it. Some of y'all was trying to do larger and larger. No, no, no. When I'm talking about my God, the world of the generous gets larger and If you're around me, the generosity that my king is going to trust me with. Oh, God. The blessings that God is bringing into my house, it's not going to be contained. What I'm believing for is the blessings that surround me because I'm going to live a blessed life is going to get what? Larger. If you don't start thinking about the kingdom the way the king thinks about it, you'll do the second half of this verse. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. And the truth of the matter is, a lot of y'all worlds are small because you won't even consider who God's blessing you, what God's blessing you with and who he's blessing you for. I recognized 10 years ago that the blessing that God would give me was not for me. Oh, shoot. You so worried about paying your bills that you cannot see that the reason he gave you the raise is because he was going to direct you to pay somebody else's bills. Oh, you thought it was to stunt and get a Birkin bag. <laughs> and you thought it was to tell and show your family that you actually are worth something because when you were younger, they never treated you like nothing. So you think coming in Louis and Gucci down makes you valuable. Baby, I was valuable before I put this on. Oh, y'all don't hear me. The worst that I have on the inside of me because I'm a king's kid is worth more than any name brand that I can wear. But the truth of the matter is you don't believe it because you standing in lines to buy something with an L and a V on it. And you think somehow that's going to increase your value. What I'm saying to you is that God's saying, would you just do it my way so your world can get larger and larger? And some people right now are like, why is he talking about finances in church? We need to talk about the word, the word of God. Well, when, when, when the average of the congregants that are in this room, the average American household is $7,000 in credit card debt, $190,000 in mortgage debt, $27,000 in auto loans, and $56,000 in student loan debt, don't have $1,000 in saving and are living check to check. One check you don't get, you're broke. That does not sound like abundant living to me. The pandemic exposed. Some of y'all made up businesses to get PPP loans. <laughs> let's be honest. Let, let, let's, let's be honest. And when I think about it on, on this earth, we have to talk about this from this platform because whatever the church stays silent on, culture gets to define. No, pastors should just preach. No, okay, cool but I'm gonna preach about everything that touches the lives of people. And I told you last week, the two most crazy stories we hear all are attached to something in relationship with people and their relationship with money. And then when you think about Jesus, for all of you Bible scholars, 16 out of the 38 parables in the New Testament, Jesus talked about possessions and finances. 288 verses in the New Testament, possessions and finances. There are 500 scriptures about prayer in the Bible, 2,350 about possessions and finances. Why would God go through such length to talk about this subject? Because he knew that in this culture, we would make money hard. But in the kingdom, it's what? Easy money. So write this point down. 
Your heart follows your treasure. I'm just going to tell you right now, your heart and your treasure are attached. And most people don't talk about it like that because uh, that doesn't matter to me. There are people that their cars get more bass than their kids do. <laughs> it's because you put your treasure into them 22 rims and you got more Febreze air fresheners in that mug. Armor all right down every time that you come in that mug. But the reason that your heart goes there is because you put your treasure there. There are some people right now that check their bank account more than they check on their marriage. Every day, you know you get paid on the 1st and the 15th. Why are you in that account on the 22nd? You know no money's coming, but wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart is. And, and, and I'm, I'm saying that, and okay, because you're like, that's not, okay. Some of y'all, you get that new pair of Jordans or that new pair of shoes that you've always been wanting. I'm going to take it back to your before Christ days when you was in the club. <laughs> y'all know what this is. And somebody walks over and steps on your new and they leave a scuff? You're ready to fight. Why? Because I put my tra It's rubber and glue. But not to you. It's a place that my heart is attached to because I put my treasure there. Some of your homes that were made out of brick and mortar, you take care of better than you take care of the home the Holy Spirit lives in. Let's be honest, you will repaint your house every seven years. Mow your grass, some of y'all. But then you'll eat yourself to sleep. And, and why? Because that house has a 250,000 note on it. And I, put, I, put, I work every, so I provide this house, I provide this home. And God's saying, I provided that house and that home. Because wherever your treasure is, that's where your heart will be also. See Matthew 6, 21. Can I say something to you very plainly? God is after your money because he's after your heart. I, Pastor Mike is not after your money. I, I don't get blessed because you do what God says for you to do at the church that you're a part of. And let me tell you this. We know we have tons of different churches and different people listening right now, and you may be a part of something else. This is not a ploy to get money. We don't have a giving campaign going on. We're not trying to build something because of the faithfulness of the people that are already a part of this church. We are able to give whenever God says to give. This is so that you can get blessed and get the mindset that unlocks the kingdom resources for you. I don't got to preach this message. I live it. So today I just want to share with you that everything that God is saying about money to you is so that he can get your heart. And some of y'all checked out because he's like, I have, I don't have enough. All you have is all you need. You can become a steward of so much by being faithful over so little. Oh my God. You don't need thousands in the bank to become qualified in the kingdom plan of being a resource to the whole world. The Bible tells us that it is not about how much you have. It's about what you do. Okay, with what you have. So last week, I introduced this easy money mindset. I want to go back over it because I'm going to teach you what this looks like, okay? Everybody say easy money. <laughs> and I want to make this so simple because for many years, I had to piece together all of these principles. By the end of this message, I want you to be able to look at $1,000 and know exactly what to do with it because we made it. Everybody say easy. easy. So money follows what? Mastery. 
Last week, I told you that there is a skill that you need to start developing so that you no longer chase after money, but money comes after you because you become good at something. And let me clear this up. You do not have to become the master. We already have one of those. You just have to continue to develop your mastery. So if you're good at something, get better at it. If you're doing something now, keep doing it until there's another level unlocked. And I just want everybody to know, and let me say this one thing, doing something good at this level transfers to the next level. Because so many people get stuck right here because I don't know my purpose. I don't know, am I doing the exact right thing? Just do the thing he gave you really good. And I promise you, the consistency will transfer to wherever he wants you to be. I promise you, being integrous will transfer to wherever he wants you to be. Many times, God never trains you in the place that he's going to have you reign. Ask David. He was trained in the pasture, but would end up reigning in the palace. The training and reigning never use, and you mad because you're not developing in the season that you're in. Because I don't think this is a part of what God's shown me. My burden is for the world. But you can't be on time for 10,000 people if you're not on time for 10 people. Okay, I, I preached it last week. Money follows what? Master. Then money requires management. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And then management checks motives. Motives determines how much you get for multiplication, and multiplication blesses many others. So, so today, as we talked about mastery last week, and we're going to talk about motives next week, today I got to zero in on this M word that a lot of people don't know how to do well. Manage. Everybody say it, manage. manage. Just say it, I'm management. In most areas of your life, we're not management. When it comes to our money, we're the manager. We're the one that God trusts with his resources for us to get his will done on this earth. And y'all, let me tell you something I figured out about eight years ago when God warped my mind and took me out of poverty and changed the way that I thought about finances. Write this down. Money doesn't just follow mastery. Money follows management. I'm going to teach you something, and I'm going to have you, hopefully by the end of this message, value management more than you value money. Because right now, if I told you I'm going to give you $10,000, somebody would be like, glory to God. He answered my prayer. And if I came and checked on you in one month, one, one that $10,000 would have been devoured by the ignorance of not knowing how to. So when I come back and, and, and I'm ready to give you another 10, I'm going to ask you, what did you do with the first 10? Well, I got this iced out grill. I've always wanted. <laughs> Me and my friends went on a boating trip. Hold on. In your electricity cut off? Hold on, don't you have medical bills? Like, cool. If that's how you manage what was given to you, I can't trust you with no more. And, and, and this is when we talk about being king dumb, D-U-M-B, or ignorant of what the king says about finances and, 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 and uh, what his principles are. I want to take you to Matthew chapter 25, verse 14. And, and, and this is a story a lot of people use out of context because this is Jesus explaining the kingdom. So, so in the kingdom, Jesus wants you to understand finances. This is the second story. He says, the kingdom of heaven is like, and then he tells a parable about 10 virgins, and then he tells this parable. Again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and underlined this word, entrusted. He trusted them. He gave them something that they did not deserve, but he trusted them with his money. To them, he was going to be gone for a while. Verse 15, he gave five bags of silver to one, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last. 
dividing it in proportion to their, what is this word? Abilities. Abilities like gifts and talents? No, 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 no. He gave them according to their ability to manage it. He's illustrating the kingdom right here. He said, and then he just left. He, he dipped on them. One, two, five. How many? One. How many? Two. And how many? Five. Most of us get caught up in what they got. Why he, why he get five? I mean, look at him. Why, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have a better education than him. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I look, I, look at this. I deserve five. And we're usually comparing what God gave somebody else to what he gave us, which distracts, uh, distracts us from doing what we're supposed to do with what God gave us. But I need everybody to understand this. Money in the kingdom is not based on availability. It's based on ability to manage. You're missing it. God has enough resources to get everybody everything they need. Like, I need you to understand the God that we serve, the Bible tells us that the whole earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. They make streets out of gold in heaven. The resources are available, but the best ability in this moment is how can you manage? Because I'm not giving you what I got. I'm giving you what you can handle. I'm going to say that again. Your bank account reflects how much God thinks you can handle based on how you've handled what he's already given you. In the kingdom, it is not about getting more money. It's about getting more management. Oh, this is going to be tight, but it's right. <laughs> Write this point down. You get more money when you get more management. Some of you will never get anything more because you do not even have a budget. She laughing. God is too. <laughs> uh, keep praying for it. I can't release that to you. Okay. How many of y'all have ever gotten a raise, a bonus, or a gift, and at the end of a month or two didn't know where the money went? Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Some of y'all ate it. Oh, God. Some of us went on a birthday trip. <laughs> birthday. Some of us bought clothes we couldn't fit. <laughs> In faith, mm. believing you're going to get that jacket on. It is not. You should have bought two sizes bigger. <laughs> but at the end of the day, God is saying, listen, I can't trust you with more because even if I give you more, you won't manage it. And I'm a good manager. So why I'm going to trust you with this and you can't handle it. Part of being a good father is knowing how much your kids can handle. Oh my gosh. My daughter Ava, she's in this five-year-old independent stage where she wants to do everything herself. Now the baby don't realize how little she is. So she wants to pour all the drinks herself. And I'm like, baby, let daddy pour the drink for you. No, daddy, three gallon thing of apple juice. The baby cannot even tip it over at the right angle to not make a mess. But for some reason, she desires to manage what she cannot yet handle. And it ends up when you manage what you cannot handle, it causes a mess. Okay. Oh God. Let me just say it like this. More money without management is misery. Because all money does is magnify who you really are. You a player without money? You flying them out. Getting rooms. Come on, let's talk about it. Right now, all you're using is FaceTime and your feet. But wait, wait till you get some money. 
private jets. That's why all the right people are flying them out, getting them down, knocking them down, flying them out. But you want a family? You want a legacy? What I'm saying is money only magnifies who you really are. And so what God says, they can't handle that. I can't, mm, I can't, I saw what they did with 500. There's no way I can trust them with 50,000. I saw what they did with 50,000. There's no way I can trust them with 500,000. He's a good father and he won't give you what will kill you. Okay, let me stop. Proverbs 10, 22, I know this is hard, but when I learned this, it changed my, I stopped praying for money and I started praying for management. I'm giving you the secrets right now. Stop praying for money and ask God for wisdom of how to deal with what you got right now. Ask God how to change your thinking about what you have right now. Once you do that, once you get more management, money just comes. Oh God. Proverbs 10, 22. The blessing of the Lord make it a person rich and adds no sorrow with it. So it doesn't matter if you have money if it comes with sorrow. Sorrow is the poison of possessions. So you can have possessions, but if there's sorrow with it, that's the poison laced in it. That's why people can have a lot and still have nothing. Okay. And and this is where, you know, in my mind, it feels like this only applies to people who don't have but it actually applies to people who have a lot too. I looked up some statistics. 16% of NBA players after 12 years go broke. 300 million? No, 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 no. I need y'all to think about this. A $300 million guaranteed contract and 12 years out of the league, you at a payday loan place? Because it doesn't matter the amount of money you get. If the money does not match the management, it will break you. This is a principle that is in the world, whether you believe in God or not. That's why 78% of NFL players are in severe financial hardship at the end of their career. And guess what? Because how many people think right now, my whole life would change if, if I hit the lottery? Come on, y'all better, y'all know what I'm talking about, but we're a hot church. I'm Bob and Trey a cool hundred million on the Powerball. God, I'll serve you for the rest of my life. I'll give you what's yours, Father, and a little more. Come on, how many of us done played the Powerball by faith? <laughs> Lord, I'm just asking right now that you would touch these numbers for the glory of your name. Don't nobody, let's be honest, don't nobody think like cool extra hundred million could, you know, change the game. One in three lottery, lottery winners are bankrupt after 10 years. How in the world do I have nothing to show for all that God gave me? It's not because I didn't have money. It's because I lacked what? Manage. Okay, so I'm just walking us through this. What, what, what if I told you the answer to your money problems is not necessarily more money? It's more management. The kingdom of heaven has more than enough resources, but now it's time for us to get more than enough management. <laughs> Let me ask this question. I want you to wrestle with this all week. What can God trust you with based off of what you've already done? You don't get a chance tomorrow. I'm talking about what you've already done. Can God trust you with more based on what you've already done? The Holy Spirit came to me, um, and I only can be transparent. I'm living this. The Holy Spirit came to me in a season where I was so poverty-stricken in my mindset. Like, you know when you're so broke that you go to stuff where they have food and you make a to-go plate before you actually make your real plate? Okay, y'all going to be fake with me in here. But like you make the to-go plate first and sneak it to the car, put it by your seat. And then you go back and you're like, "Ah, yeah, wow. You, 
You know how you with your friends and um, they all want to go somewhere and you know the gas in your car t- takes a lot from you. So you volunteer to ride with them? Y'all going, hey, can I ride? She said, yeah, yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is when God arrested my heart with this message, I was not whoever you think I am. I wasn't Pastor Mike. I didn't have Transformation Church. I was a young person trying to do things the king's way with not a lot of instruction. And the Holy Spirit, oh, I love the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says that he will teach you the things you need to know. You don't need a guru or a mentor if you have the Holy Spirit. He will lead you into all, everybody say truth. I asked the Holy Spirit to teach me the truth about finances. And this is what he said to me. He said, Michael, up until this point, you have mismanaged millions. And I said, what? I ain't had millions. He said, yes, you did. Every dollar is an opportunity for you to manage millions. It's what you did with it that made you mismanage millions. And I got convicted. And today I just wanted to title the message what the Holy Spirit gave me, the mismanagement of millions. And I want to give you seven secrets to simple stewardship. Over the years that I have walked this out and God has changed me from being completely broke to getting a heart of generosity and getting a mindset that money is easy in the kingdom. I want to help you not mismanage the millions. And some of y'all is like, I got tens and fifteens. There's not millions. Yes, there is. If you do right now with what God has given you, everything you're supposed to do, he then can trust you with more. So I'm going to give you seven secrets. I'm going to run through these real quick, and then I'm going to camp out at one so that we can leave here completely transformed. Number one secret so that you can have simple stewardship is you seek first. Everybody say seek first. The reason I have to say this to you is because most people do not seek the king first on what he wants you to do with the finances. So right now we have to change the principles that we think about money and we have to make it that God's way of doing finances is the ultimate way that we should do finances. Everybody shout at me, seek first. This is talking about kingdom thinking. This is the first thing that had to change in my mind and my heart. I had to get kingdom thinking. So today, everything that I'm going to give you is kingdom thinking. This is how the king wants his government to run. As it is in heaven, let it be on. He wants his kingdom established here as it already is in heaven. So the first thing we have to do is seek first the kingdom. Matthew 6, we all know it. Seek first the kingdom of God above all else. Get his thinking and live righteously. And he will give you some of the stuff you need. No, only the things that look right. Everything you need. The biggest example of this in my mind is Solomon. Most scholars and theologians believe he was the richest man that ever lived. One of them. And and, and throughout the Bible, I mean, Solomon was a gangster. When, When it was customary to sacrifice one bull, which was currency back in the day, when it came time to dedicate the temple, he sacrificed a thousand when one was required. And that got God's attention so much that he visited Solomon in his dreams and said, hey, bro, what you want? (laughs) Think about God coming and asking you right now. What do you want? He only can ask people what they want who have decided to have his idea about what resources are for. He comes to Solomon after this and said, what you want? Look at how gangster Solomon's answer is. All I want is wisdom to be able to take care of your people. God said, oh, no, you didn't. Oh, no, you didn't. I asked you what you want, and you could have said a Bentley. You could have said a mansion. You could have said a palace. You could have said power, and what you want is the right thinking. Angels, I got to do something unprecedented. I got to change. This baby wants the right thoughts. He wants my thoughts. So, Solomon, I'm going to give you wisdom, but I'm going to give you everything you didn't ask for too. 
He literally, he was blessed by the way. What I'm telling you is if you digest all this stuff that I'm saying to you right now and you get your thinking right, if you get this right, if you, even if you ain't got it, you get this right. God says, now I can bless you with what you didn't even ask for because what I asked for is the thinking of the kingdom, okay? So that's number one. Number two, so I'm gonna seek first, but then number two, I'm gonna sow frequently. It's not enough to know the principles of God. You got to do the principles of God. Yeah. And this is where a lot of the church gets stuck. Because it's like, oh, I know God when you, I mean, when, whenever you bless me, Lord, I'll do what you say. He said, I already bless you. Do it. Where's the last place you sowed? Where's the last place that you did it? And the reason that sowing frequently is something we're having to do because the central thought around sowing frequently is, I trust you, God. So, so, so the first one is thinking. The second one is when you sow frequently, you're saying, I'm trusting. I'm trusting you. Mm, this hurts, but I'm trusting you. Ah, I could use this for some other stuff. I'm trusting you. You told me to turn around and go give to that homeless person? It's a scam, God. You, you arguing with God about what he told, it's a scam, God. I see them here all the time. He said, I don't care what they're going to do with it. Right now, I'm trusting you are going to do what I ask you to do with it. And there are so many of us that our blessings are held up because we don't think where God tells us to give is worthy. And obeying God, it's not about the outcome. It's about the obedience. And that's why a farmer, a good farmer, how many people in this room, on the chat, online, have ever been a farmer? Come on, like hands. Oh, ooh, 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 what, what, what sound was that? <laughs> sound like a choking uh, rooster. Oh, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> okay, not a lot of people have been farmers. But, but, but a good farmer, does not plant one seed and hope that that seed is going to produce enough fruit for him and his family to eat off of. A good farmer, every day they wake up. I ain't seen nothing, but I got faith like a farmer because I don't know which one of these things is about to produce. But I got enough out here when I go to the store, when I go to Starbucks, when I go to the family reunion, and I don't like my family that much, and they steal from me. But if you tell, but if you tell me to give, if you tell me that everybody shot at me, so, so. if you say so, if you say so, that's how I sow. If you say so. There are many times that I don't say so, but he says so. So I say, so? Oh, God. There's so many times where God's like, do this. And I'm like, that don't make sense. He said, it won't make sense, but it will make a miracle. So if you say so. So, so what I'm telling you is when you sow, you're trusting that God is not giving you what he's given you. You're trusting that there is more that he's going to give you because you obey and you manage what he's given you. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse 10. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, supply ooh, and multiply. I like that. Supply and multiply the seed you have. So it has to be in the ground for it to multiply. Oh God. And increase the fruits of your righteousness. I'm going to keep moving because I got a lot of them. Number three, this one going to test some people. Number one is seek first. Everybody say seek first. seek first. That's the thinking. Everybody say so frequently. So frequently. That's trusting. Number three, write this down. Spend feasibly. I didn't say spend frugally. Because some people can do stuff that other people can't do. And, and, and a lot of times we want everything in the kingdom to be fair. But it's not fair because we manage differently. So if you don't manage and you don't have enough, 
but I manage and God gives me more than enough, I might can buy something you can't buy. Okay. This is why Instagram and social media be playing people. Because a lot of y'all look at people and be like, ugh, they shouldn't be able to. And my daddy told me something. He said, don't ever count nobody else's money. Because what people look like don't necessarily mean. That's what's, what it really is. What I'm asking everybody in the body of Christ to do is spend feasibly. If you can manage what God has given you and you can go to Starbucks every day, do you. But if you need to make some folders in your cup, because it's the best part of waking up. There is no shame. Get you one Starbucks cup that you got water and ice because you want it to be in your aesthetic. Put ice in your cup at the house. Put it in. Write your name on it. Take your picture, but don't pay. I'm trying to teach you how to be creative. Somebody say, spend feasibly. For certain people, the Louis and the Gucci is okay because they don't handle their money right. For other people, it is the thrift store. That we have to be, and you can still look good. And either, but what I'm saying is, I'm not trying to impress people. I'm trying to impress God with my, everybody say the M word, management. That's why Joseph, oh no, no, no. Let's, let's wait on Joseph. Let's just go to Luke chapter 14, verse 28. It says, but don't begin until you count up the cost. Like, like. The reason I'm telling you to spend feasibly, because you got to count up the cost. Where's your budget? How much is it going to cost to do what you need to do? How much, you, how much do you need to actually go on that trip? God is saying to you right now, count up the cost. Number four, save fundamentally. Now, now most people don't save money. We, 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 we use everything we get and believe that the next thing going to be the best thing. But I have biblical precedents for saving fundamentally. And let me tell you what saving fundamentally is about. It's about timing. You don't save money just to save money. Some people, their savings is their God. No, no, no. As long as I got this 30,000 packed away, what if God asks you for it? What if he says, I want you to give me everything? Before this service, I had a man of God and his wife travel to this city to give everything that they had out of their personal account and their savings account because God asked for it. With tears in their eyes, trembling, hands trembling, he said, will you pray for me? Because God's asked me for everything. Everything in his savings. And I'm not telling anybody to do that. You better only do what God calls you to do. Oh, hold on. Let me stop. Is that my, you're going to be at the Holiday Inn begging for a room. Do you hear me? You, 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 you can't do things in comparison with anybody. You have to only do the things that God asks you to do. But the question is, if he asks you, will you have the audacity to obey? And this is why I say saving is about timing. Oh, I'm going to say it like this. Because saving is not just about saving. Saving is for saving. Saving is not just about saving money. Saving is for a time that it's not looking like it looks right now. That will save me. The biblical precedence is Joseph in Genesis chapter 41. Remember when God came to him and said, hey, in seven years, there's going to be a famine. What I need you to do right now, while there's plenty, is I need you to save. Tell everybody to fundamentally save because there will be a season where you're going to need saving. And what you do today is going to save you in a different season. Joseph begins to command the resources for an entire nation he wasn't born into. That then went and blessed his own family after they betrayed him. Because in a season of plenty, he was saving. I'm trying to make this thing so easy for you. What your parents didn't teach, why don't they teach this stuff in economics in school? Like I left school not knowing anything except get in debt. 
Oh, it's because they don't want you to understand. <laughs> it's because the more ignorance you have in an area, the more you supply the machine with what they need to continue to run your life. Okay. So you need to save fundamentally. Let's go over the uh, first four. You need to seek first so frequently. Talk to me. Spend feasibly and what? Save fundamentally. Okay. And let me just say this. We don't save out of fear. There are a lot of people that teach save because you don't know when a tornado going to hit your house. Save because you don't know when the car going to break down and you're going to be stranded and you're going to be pregnant and you're going to have three kids and they're going to be stranded on the street with no baby daddy. And that's like, what is going Like, what? The Bible said God has not given us a spirit of fear. But of what? Power, love, and a sound. We don't save out of fear. We save for other seasons. Okay? So number five. Now, this is the one that the church don't talk about at all. Secure the future. The Bible says, Proverbs 13, 22, a good man leaves an inheritance for who? The future. You need to be thinking right now, how do I transfer everything that God's given me to manage to children that will never meet me? These are not thoughts we think because poverty has clouded our principles. And I'm trying to give you kingdom principles today to change your life. I need you. I'll just tell you my personal situation because I'm telling you, I walk this out every single day. I was on the phone with my money manager. <laughs> I have a money manager. <laughs> Do you know how crazy that is to even say? I was on the phone with my money manager and I told him, I said, um, I need us to do something this month. And he was like, what? I said, I'm about to teach a series on financial stewardship and generosity. And I need to make sure that I've put this in place before I stand up there to talk to these people. He said, what do you want to do? I said, I need you to come up with a plan for three generations of Todd's to be able to see, receive income from me. He said, don't talk like that, boy. <laughs> he got so excited. I said, no, I need, I need a plan. If it's $5 a month that I'm putting away for all Bella's kids, for all of Ava's kids, for all of MJ kids by faith, for all of Gia's kids, and I'm putting $5 away, and then after them, I'm a plan for each of them to have four kids at least, and then, well, let's just plan for five, and then... This is the real conversation. It was less than $400 a month for me to just start preparing with $5. He didn't say how much it had to be, but he said a good man, a good woman leaves an inheritance for his children. I'm sitting there with a closet full of shoes and my kids may not even wear the same size as me. Oh God. I'm sitting here for insecurity reasons, looking at Jordans that gave me some, he said, sell them. Put that away for your children's children. So into the, everybody say future. What I'm trying to do today is expand your mind. That in the kingdom, we do not just think about now. We secure the future. We are worried about transferring. This church will be endowed. And most of us don't even know what that word means. But what I'm telling you is banks and like y'all know families like the Rockefellers and, and, and the Marriott's. Marriott's like that's not just a hotel. That's somebody's that last name. The Marriott family will have money for the rest of the time the earth is still rotating. Because they figured out a system to be able to not just transfer wealth, transfer, the first thing I said, thinking. And the church, we have not figured out how to transfer thinking. All we want to do is floss and flex and be like, get like me. What? God is saying, I want you to be thinking right now about transferring. Okay, number five, I'm almost done with all of these. Number six, oh, this is my favorite. Savor fully. 
Have you ever had good food and it, it was so good you ate slower? Come on, let's like, what is that meal for y'all? What is the meal that like, come on, somebody said chicken stew, porterhouse steak. Come on, yell at me. What is the food that you savor? What'd you say? Salmon and spinach, mac and cheese. What'd you say? Oxtails, Jamaican food. Yeah, 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 bop, bop, bop. Okay, what, what else? Come on, come on, what, what's some food? What'd you say? Crab legs and... He said, keep it going. Come on, give me a couple more. What'd you say? Filet mignon. And how about desserts? Cheesecake and pound cake. And hey, somebody quickened and got the spirit for the first time in the service. Okay. Okay. Uh, we heard oxtails. You hungry? Be quiet. No, it's fine. Okay. What I'm saying is we have all eaten something that was so good we had to take more time to enjoy it. This is something the church has done a really bad job when it comes to finances. It makes you think that you can't enjoy finances. And what I'm saying is when you manage what God has given you correctly, then you can savor fully what he's given you. The Bible says, taste and see. That the, everybody's supposed to go see the beach. Everybody's supposed to be able to see God's glory. If you want to see one of the eight uh, wonders of the world, is it eight or seven? Which one is it? Okay, seven wonders of the world. Somebody's like, eight. It is eight. Uh, it is eight. <laughs> I, I believe that you're supposed to experience this life. But most people are savoring when they haven't saved. They're savoring when they're frivolous with spending. They're saving and they, they're savoring and they have not done what's happened. What I'm telling you is when you do this thing right, you can enjoy life at a different level. Oh my gosh. Last year for my wife's birthday, Natalie don't ask for nothing, but she came to me and she said, babe, I really want to go to somewhere tropical. I said, we can go to tropical smoothie if you want to. I mean, it's right up the street. Whole menu on me. She said, boy, stop playing. And she said, she said, I want to go like to Costa Rica. I said, oh. But she said, I want to, Mike, I want to, I want to bring my friends. And I don't want them to have to pay for it. And I said, so who's paying for it? <laughs> I, I'm fine. We can believe in God. All jokes aside, for the first time in our lives, we had worked these principles so good, so consistently, so intentionally, that when I looked at the little account where that stuff was in there, we could be able to savor this moment fully without thinking about losing anything. And when I went on that trip to stay in a 12,000 square foot mansion with for my closest friend couples, looking at what God had made and my wife in the bathing suit every day. <laughs> oh, whoo, I savored it fully. <laughs> Y'all playing with me? <sighs> there was a joy and a peace. And for one of the first times, I understood what the Bible said. It is more blessed to give. Then it, I didn't get nothing. I gave something and that's when I got it. I want to let you know, as you do things the king's way, life becomes easier, better, and more enjoyable to be able to live. Okay. Is this simple enough for everybody? No, 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 no. For real. Is this easy? Okay. I need just to go over it. The six that I told you. Number one is seek first. Number two is so frequently. Number three is spin feasibly. Number four is save fundamentally. Number five is secure the future. And number six is savor fully. Now I'm going to give you the secret. All of those you can do without God. The six that I just gave you are principles that you can work 
without having a relationship with God. And this is why there are people that have money in the world and you'd be like, they're not even saved. And they're talking about make it clap, make it clap, booty tap, booty tap. And how, how in the world are they throwing hymns and doing all this other stuff? Because there are principles in the earth that work whether you believe God or not. And churches don't want to tell you this. I'm telling you, oh, but there's one thing. What does it profit a man to gain the entire world? They can have that, but have no peace. It's not worth it. And that's why I tell people, you can have millions of dollars in the bank, but if your soul is bankrupt, it doesn't matter. But number seven is the secret. And it really should be around the top of your page, but I saved it because I told you I was going to give you seven secrets to simple stewardship. This is the one that everybody has to get. Number seven, set apart the forbidden. Set apart the forbidden. This one is tithing. Dang. Hold on, Pastor Mike, you, uh, <laughs> this has been great up until this point. Um, really practical, really biblical. I like what you've been saying. But you want me to set apart what's, been, what's forbidden? Yeah. God requires all the way back to the garden that I will always have something that I'm going to test you with. Can we go back to Adam and Eve? What did he say to them? You can eat of every tree in this garden. But this one right here, I set it apart. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, maybe you've never thought about this. It was the garden's tithe. Oh, that's nasty. Oh! And why did they get kicked out of the garden? Because they ate what was supposed to be set apart. Okay. What I'm telling you is that in the kingdom, 10% of everything that you get in increase, God says it's set apart for me. I don't like that. Don't matter. I don't think that's fair. <laughs> well, I thought that was Old Testament. Yeah, and it's New Testament and it was before the law. This is a principle that is all about what's in your heart. And, 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 and a lot of churches, and I, I want to apologize, they really, really do a disservice to this because they misinterpret the heart of God on the tithe. And, and I'm going to expose where it gets misinterpreted. And I want to give Transformation Church, who is the, the key to the rise of a holy rebellion, I'm going to give us the actual right interpretation. Malachi 3, okay? We've heard this in almost every offering time ever. Will a man rob God? How do you rob God? In tithe and offering. So don't rob God. Give your tithe <laughs> and your offering. That's not the spirit in which I believe God is speaking this scripture in. When, when I begin to think about the, let's just be really practical. Who gonna rob God? No, I just like, God's here, you're here. Think practically, could anybody actually like, give, Lord, give it to me, like right now, now. I ain't playing with you, I withhold my worship. Like, like what? Like. It cannot be that will a man rob God of money? What is the only way you can rob somebody who's in authority? You don't rob God of money. You rob God of the opportunity to bless you. How can a man rob God? Not doing things his way. And he cannot reward you the way he wants to reward you because you didn't do it the way. Are you still loved? Yes. Are you still accepted? Yes. Are you still his child? Yes. But this thing that I have for you, 
I can't give you because you're disobedient. How did you rob God? You robbed me of the opportunity to bless you. If you would have just freaking done what I said to do with that $200, you took that $200 from your side hustle and you gave it all to the mortgage company. And all I asked you to do was give me 20 of it because it's mine anyway. You can't give it. You have to return it because it was his anyway. And you didn't know what I had back here. So you make, oh, I see God over the balcony of heaven like, God, ah, 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 you dumb. <laughs> oh. Every first and 15. They play me every time. And they don't know I got all of this stored up for those who manage what I give them right. How can a man rob God? You rob him of the opportunity to bless you. What are you saying, Pastor Mike? Don't rob God of an opportunity to bless you. When I found this out, tithing became automatic for me. On the 1st and the 15th at 1201, I got it set up. Get out my account. <laughs> Bye. It, when I say it's automatic, because every time I honor God in that way, I give him an opportunity Knock my socks off. Do whatever you want to do. Open. Let me just read it. Oh, my God, because y'all going to see this. So I'm going to add that little phrase to Matthew chapter 3, verse 8, and watch this scripture come alive. I love the Bible. Will a man rob God of an opportunity to bless him? Yet you have robbed me of many opportunities to bless you. But you say, in what way have, you, have, have we robbed you of opportunities to bless us? In tithe and offering. Mm. Verse 9, you are cursed with a curse. Now, this is the part I love to explain because people will be like, uh-uh, I'm not cursed because of what Jesus Christ did. Exactly. So when you come into the kingdom, you step over into another level of protection. But when you step out of the way the king says for you to do it, the world we live in, the fallen world, is cursed already. It's not that you get another curse. You don't get, no, no, you don't get another curse. You just step out from under the protection and you do it culture's way. And so you enter curse until you step back into the kingdom's way of doing it. Oh, God. So your salvation is secure. But your money. It's scary. Why? Because I've chosen to do it culture's way. And this don't feel blessed. This feels cursed. <laughs> so what does he say to do? For you to have robbed me of the opportunity to bless you, even this whole nation has robbed me. You just think about America. Uncle Sam don't trust you. Uncle Sam take his before you even get it. I don't trust them, eh, 22%. <laughs> I have to say this. The government doesn't trust you because the government doesn't love you. The reason why God doesn't take your money and he gives you the choice or the freedom to give it because it cannot be love if there is no choice. And what God is saying to everybody is you prove what you actually have in your heart. When you actually do what I ask you to do, if you love me, the commandment says, obey my commands. This is not about legalism. This is about love. Oh, God. I wish I had 10 weeks. Verse 10, it says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. That's wherever your local church is, whether that's Transformation Church, Vu Church, Elevation Church, um, a City Church, wherever it is, wherever that you are going, that's the storehouse. This is the local church, that there may be food in my house. That's how we're able to give to uh, Casa Ogar and help the orphans. And that's how we're able to do things for all different people. Let me just throw this out here real quick. The Spanish community, God has given us a burden for here at Transformation Church like never before. And, and one of the things that we are initiating, not just giving to an orphanage in, um, in uh, Mexico, um, 
this Friday, I'm just letting everybody know that's in um, my, my Spanish speaking community. We are now translating all of our sermons into Spanish. Oh yeah, this Friday, TC Espanol is starting on YouTube. Oh yeah. You can tell all the essays, they're gonna be able to hear the word of God. Now hear me, now hear me. This is generosity. It's not just giving money. When we give money, then we can go and pay translators. And we found a guy that kind of talked like me in Spanish, I think. <laughs> With the same passion and the same. And, and we're going to start this Friday with relationship goals. And, and, and the entire sermon series is going to be translated. And by the end of the year, we plan to have many, many, many sermons so that we can reach in generosity with the message of Jesus Christ. Like, oh God. I'm talking about if we were just worried about keeping the lights on, we couldn't be generous and reach other people with the message of Jesus Christ. Verse 10, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, the local church, that there may be food in my house and try me. Oh, I love this. He says, try me. Another translation says, prove. Another translation says, test me. Ooh. It's almost like he's saying, I dare you. I dare you to honor me with 10% of your income. Watch what I do. You can't be me giving. I bet you, you can't. I double dog dare you. And you already know if they double dog dare you, what? You got to do it. It's like, I don't. This is the only place in the Bible where God says, test me. I bet you I'm good for it. I bet you if you honor me from this day forward with 10% of your increase, you will never, ever be able to say I left you, forsake you. I'm going to bless you so big that people going to wonder why did you not start doing this earlier? Test me. And when God talks gangster like that, he always fulfills on his promise. Then he goes on to try to show you how big he is. He says, try me at this. Test me. And then it says who's talking, says the Lord of hosts. This is not a pastor. This is not a priest. This, this is God talking. If I will not open for you, not for your church, not for, I will open, everybody say for me. Oh, I love this. The windows of heaven and pour you out such blessing, you ain't going to have enough room to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. This further convinces me that God invented giving for our sake so that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts. Who said it? The Lord. Oh. And guess what? I'm going to bless you so big, all the nations will call you blessed. For you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. I'm just telling you what changed my life. When I started setting aside what was forbidden, he said, it's mine. Return it to me and see what I do in your life. I said, God, do you know, do you see that number? You know what I could do with that? And he said, you know what I can do with that? What you got to realize is 90% with God's blessing is better than 100% without it. Oh, I just said a mouthful. So write this down. The tithe is a test. When we tithe, we give God the opportunity to bless us. Leviticus 27, 30. And all the tithe of the land, whether the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy or set apart to the Lord. Let me give you another one. The tithe is first. Now, this is where most people mess up because um, they give after everything is done. It doesn't take faith to honor God after you, all, you, you know you got it. Faith is first. Everybody say faith, faith is first. I think about the story of Cain and Abel. And if you ever listen to that story or watch that story, 
um, God could only accept one of their offerings because it said at the moment that he got blessed, he gave. The other one said in the process of time, he gave. And the Lord, let me just say this, he is first. So he can't accept seconds. So, so the tithe is not just a test that we take every time we get increase on the first and the 15th or, or, or whenever you get increase. The tithe is first, Deuteronomy 26. It says, and, and it shall be when you come into the land which the Lord your God has given you. Who gave you the land? Okay, he's given you the land as an inheritance and you possess it and dwell in it that you shall take some of the first of all the produce of the ground, which you shall bring from your land that the Lord God has given you and put it in a basket and go to the place where the Lord your God chooses to make his name abide. That would be the church. This is where he chooses to make his name abide. Drop down to verse 13. It says, then you shall say before the Lord your God, I have removed the holy tithes from my house, from my bank account, and also have given them to the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, the fatherless, the widow, according to all your commands, which you have commanded me. I have not transgressed. This one messed me up. Your commandments, nor I ha have I forgotten them. I have not eaten any of them when I was in mourning or when times got hard, nor I ha have I removed any of it for the unclean use. The crazy thing is there was a season in my life where I was using the tithe to pay for pornography. Think about it, not just not giving the tithe, but what happens when we take the tithe and we use it for things that pull us further away from God? <sighs> mm, that hits me. Nor given any for the dead. I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, my God, and have done according to all that you have commanded me. Look down ooh, from your holy habitation from heaven and bless your people, Israel, and the land which you have given us, just as you swore to our fathers, a land flowing with milk and honey. When you set aside the tithe, you can pray this prayer. Look down from heaven and bless us. More than we've ever been blessed before. The tithe is for, could you just bring me the table real quick? And I'm going to show this and then we're going to go home. I, 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 I want um, somebody who's in college. Lift, raise your hand. If, you in college, sis? Come here. Okay. Uh, um, I, 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 I want your help real quick, okay? Y'all can clap for us. Some is like, dang. Y'all don't even know what's about to happen. Is it? Okay. What's your name, sis? Amber. Amber, come here. Where you go to school? Oh, are you in the building? All right. All right, so I need you to, uh, yeah, come over here. You matching the set and you got your black and the red on? This is great. Okay, so I need you to do something for me, okay? Um, I'm going to give you something. This is 10 pennies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These are your pennies now. Which one is the tithe? Because that represents God's house. So, so whichever one is the tithe, I need you to put it in God's house. Which one's the tithe? What, what, this one? Okay. Why, why that one? Because it's the first one? Because it's the first one? I mean, it is the first one that I put down. Would it matter? Would it matter? Because they're each, Cause they're each the same amount. No. The first one is the first place you give it. Wow. So, 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 so take any of them. But the first one belongs to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just put it. It's to God. All it is is yours. Now I need you to work the other six principles with this. I need you to spend in a way that is feasible. I need you to save fundamentally. I, I'm not going to tell you what to do with this. I'm just asking you to do something with it that it brings a return. Okay? But you honor God. These nine pennies are blessed. So now I'm going to give you nine, I'm going to give you 10 dimes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I need you to honor God with the tithe. Which one's the tithe? Go ahead. Just honor God with it. And then you take the rest of it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Can you honor God with the tithe? Just honor him with it. Yeah, just 
Don't act confused. The rest of that's yours. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Could you just honor God with the tithe? It's just the first one. All this yours. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Could you just honor God with the tithe? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. See, see, which one's the tithe? That one. All of this is you. Today, the only reason I can give you this is because you are a good manager with what I asked you to do with what I gave you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's a thousand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, y'all can rejoice with those who rejoice. One, two, three, four, five, six. It takes a minute when you start getting up in increments. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nine, 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 nine. It feels like there's not enough room on this table. Ten thousand dollars. Can can you honor God with what's first? Can can you just honor God with the tithe? I mean, do it. All of this is yours. Y'all better rejoice. It's easy money. Yo, this is easy. It's easy when you honor God when you do what he asks you to do it doesn't matter if you're in a penthouse or you're in college God says honor me somebody shouted me it's easy I don't know you and I don't know your situation but God told me to call a college student up and to, to, to dis distribute, let me, let me be very clear. This is not the church's money. This is me and Pastor Natalie's personal money. Okay, this is not an example that somebody's going to. This is sacrificial giving. I don't, I don't know what you prayed for. But what God obviously wanted to display for everybody else to get how easy it is, is that when you do what God asks you to do, he will supply all of your needs. Y'all can't even rejoice with her. That's crazy. Okay. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to just show you something. This is all God required for all of that. Now I want, no, 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 no. Bring the camera so they can see it. This is what God asked for. This is what you get afterwards. Okay. Why did you do an example like this? Because I want you to know how easy it is to just honor God with the wealth he gave you the ability to get. You can't purchase a breath. You can't regulate your arms moving. You can't. Everything we have is a gift from God. And all he's asking is when you get this little green stuff that people put value on. Honor me by setting aside what I've asked to be set apart for me. This don't even look fair. But it's not fair because God don't play fair. He wants you to see that you can never outgive him. 
Can I say something to you that you maybe never thought of? Jesus was God's tithe. He sent his only and his first son on a maybe so that he could get an entire family of people to believe. It doesn't take faith to, ser- to, to sow something after you already know you got it. So, for God so loved the world that he gave his only, he gave it first. Will y'all give this sister an amazing fan club? Huh? Where do you go? First thing is why you ain't got your money. Like you said, where do I go? You go wherever you want to. She needs security now, Scott. Can you help her? Make sure she okay, because, yeah, collect your blessing. Don't help her, Joe. She need to figure out how to, hey, there's joy. She start moving and wiggling a little bit. Huh? One thing I'm going to say, when God starts blessing you, it don't matter what anybody think. Right now, somebody's trying to be awkward. Baby, you take your time. Put it in the, the take it. Do whatever you want to do right now. I'm going to just keep preaching. You will never be able to afford to tithe until you start tithing. There's only two testimonies. I can't afford to tithe. That's one testimony and there's another testimony. Man, my whole life changed (laughs) when I started tithing. Last point. Tithing is biblical. The reason I've given you so many scriptures is because I want you to see this. Because people are like, this is this, this is this, this is this. Tithing is this. It's a play. Okay, cool. This is the only place that God said, test me. I double dog dare you to start tithing. And a lot of people don't like it because that Malachi scripture is in the Old Testament. And that's why I believe it's right where it's supposed to be because the principle is a test. It's a test. But what if I told you Jesus himself told us we ought to tithe? Like if Jesus in red in your Bible said you ought to tithe, would you tithe? The crazy thing is some people are still thinking about it. Some people didn't even say, no, I said, would you tithe? Like, mm. <laughs> Matthew chapter 23, 23. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. For you pay tithe of mint, anise, and cumin. Those are spices you put on your food. And you have neglected the weightier matter of the law. This is Jesus talking. You've neglected justice and mercy and faith. Watch this. These you ought to have done. You ought to tithe off of your increase without leaving the other undone. Jesus is saying, you need to do justice, mercy, and faith. And you need to give 10% or return 10% of everything that you get. Jesus said this. And there are people right now that's like, but does he really require it all the time? What I'm telling you, this is a principle of managing. I'm going to show it one one more way because I just want everybody to say easy money. I hope you never forget this. Um, Scott, Will, uh, Joe, come up here real quick. And, and, and this is how we end. Keys, you can come up. Because um, I think this is going to help people get it. Um, if, let's just say I'm going away on a trip. Because that Matthew scripture said that the master was going away on a long trip. Okay. Let's say I'm going away on a trip. And I decide that I'm going to provide for Pastor Natalie um, some resources and some extra funds. I already got her taken care of, but I know how much she loved Target and sometimes stuff gets out of whack. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to provide for her some extra funds through three people I'm entrusting. I'm going to send each one of you, Will, Joe, Scott, I'm going to send each of you $10,000 every month. Yes, Scott, don't get too happy. This is just an example, okay? <laughs> I'm going to send each of you $10,000 a month and all I'm asking you to do is give my wife $1,000 a month. So that's it. You get to keep the other nine, okay? But I'm providing the funds. I'm giving them to you. Please give them to my wife every month. So I'm on the phone caking with Natalie one night. Y'all remember caking? (laughs) Y'all don't know nothing about caking. (sighs) That just showed my age. I was on the phone caking. (laughs) What you doing? What you doing? (laughs) 
what you wearing, what you wearing, like that. And I said, oh, hey, tell me about those extra funds. Have they been coming to you? And she was like, yeah. She was like, Will? Will sends $1,000 every month like clockwork. Like the first, the 15th, I mean, it comes every time. It's like clockwork. I was like, okay, I like that. What about Joe? And she said, Joe, my, Joe sends 2000 every month. And I said, I said, I only asked him for 1000 She's like, I know, but every, like clockwork, he sends 2000 every month. I was like, okay. And, and, and what about Trader? I mean, Scott. She said, well, we got to talk about Scott. The, the first month, Scott sent 700. The second month, he sent 400. And this last month, he didn't send anything. Scott didn't send nothing? I gave him the 10,000. I told him to only give you one. He can keep the other nine. Why in the world wouldn't he give the resources to my bride? You know what I'm going to do? I'm no longer going to send Scott the $10,000. I'm going to send Joe what I was going to send Scott. And I'm going to send Will. <laughs> Get away from him. I rebuke you. <laughs> And that's what people try to do. They try to get mad at who God's blessing. But you mismanaged. All I'm going to do is funnel it through the ones I can get it through. Could tithing be more personal to God than we think? Because it's the thing that he gives us resources to take care of his bride. The bride of Christ. Thank y'all. This is what I came to the conclusion of. Listen to me. I always lose what I mismanage. I, God told you to give it. You just hold on. You see, she said, I got to get this out my purse right now. Here, no, 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 no. This type of reaction is what has to well up on the inside of you. Baby girl, what I'm telling you right now is what you just did was change the future of your children's 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 children. Uh, you miss it. Y'all better rejoice with her. Something broke in her mind. Something changed in her heart. She said, I'm going to interrupt all these thousands of people. I got it in my hand. I'm going to give it right now. She didn't even care about what you thought about her. Because when you understand what God is asking you to do, baby girl, I'm so happy for you. When you understand what God wants to do, then you manage correctly what he's given you to manage. Somebody say, all I have is all I need. So listen to the point. I always lose what I mismanage. I always lose what I mismanage. God would never do that. Read the end of the story of the talents. The one who dug a hole and did not multiply what God gave him, did not honor God with what he gave him. He took from him and gave it to the one who stewarded and managed it properly. And then said, get this fool out my face. Read it. He says, this wicked and lazy servant, the least you could have done is, watch this, put it in the world system and got me a little interest. If you would have put it in the kingdom, that mug would have doubled. But at least you could have put it in the bank and gained me something. What I mismanage, I will always lose. Can I say this? Not just money, your marriage. Mismanage your marriage, you'll lose it. Your health. Oh, God. Mismanage your health, you'll lose it. Oh, God. Somebody say, I will always lose what I mismanage. When I heard Dr. Monroe say that, it took me to Luke chapter 16. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling, watch this, worldly wealth, just this money, these dollars, who will trust you with true riches, which are people? And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, if you haven't managed what somebody else is, who will give you property of your own? Today, I just want to tell you, we don't need to pray for more money. 
We need to believe God for more what? Management. Would everybody stand everywhere? Today, I'm going to ask you to do what I did six and a half years ago. I want us to repent. And the word repent means to turn. Today, Transformation Nation, I need you to hear me. I need us to repent for mismanaging what God has given us. And as of today, somebody shout at me today. today. We're making a change. Could you just lift your hands all over the world? If you know this prayer is for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, today we come as a body of believers asking you to transform our hearts by starting in our minds. Transform our thinking, God. Let us be able to see ourselves as managers and not owners, God. You own everything, but you've asked us to partner with you to manage it here on this earth. And today, Father God, where we have not taken that role seriously, today we repent. And we ask you, Father, to give us a heart like yours. Give us a heart of generosity and stewardship. God, what we have now, we will no longer squander. But we are deciding, Father God, in this place, in this atmosphere, Father, that we will seek first your principles about giving and finances, Father God. And then what we will do, Father, is sow frequently wherever you tell us to sow. And God, we will be ones that spend feasibly and save fundamentally, Father, and secure the future, God. And we want to be the ones, Father, that savor this life that you called us to have fully but not before we separate what has been forbidden. God, we are going to honor you with our tithe from here on out. God, I thank you that your word says you give seed to the sower. I thank you that a well of generosity would come and raise up on the inside of your people. God, I thank you that this won't be a practice for a season. I thank you, Father, that this will be ordinary behavior for kingdom citizens. I declare and decree that the blessing of the Lord is going to fall on this group of people and those watching on rebroadcast and those watching because a friend sent it to them, those watching on internet. Father, I thank you that as we embrace these kingdom principles, that you will bless us beyond our belief. And Father, it's not just for us. We get blessed by the way. Thank you that you are going to use the resources that you funnel through us to bless many others. Let us put a priority on managing what you've given us now because that's how you can trust us with more. Today, God, we repent. We turn back to you. We turn back to your ways. We turn back to your precepts, your principles, and your thoughts and concepts for the kingdom. Today, have your way. Even in this moment right now, I want you to ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, what are you trying to say to me through this message? (laughs) See, because I've talked for a long time, but the Holy Spirit wants to talk to you. There may be something he's requiring of you. He's asking of you. I'm not asking nothing of you. I'm asking you, ask the Holy Spirit. What are you trying to say to me? Speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. These are moments we don't rush out of. This is surgery right now. This is where God is changing generational habits of poverty or generational cycles of selfishness. In these moments, this is where God's changing people. You don't have to have what your family had. Mm. You do not have to be locked to what you were born into. God's saying, I can do exceedingly, abundantly above all you can ask or think. Today, somebody's 50 years old and everything's changing. 60 years old and everything's changing. 70 years old and everything's changing. Somebody's 17 and everything's changing. You are getting the kingdom concepts. Thank you, Lord. Let me reiterate to you. (laughs) Money is just the key to your heart. (laughs) Where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Let me tell you, when God got my money, he got my heart. And when he got my heart, he transformed my heart. (laughs) A lot of y'all, this is the key. I tell this testimony all the time. When I really overcame pornography and the things that I was dealing with is when I started tithing consistently. Why are you saying that, Pastor Mike? Because every time I got something, I say, here's my heart, God. Here's my heart, God. And he was like, dang, 
the more you put your heart in my hand, the more I can scrape away the things that culture put on you, the more that I can change. I can give you more, a new situation. I'm telling y'all what has practically changed my life. Less of me, more of you. This is the key that somebody's been waiting for. So I give myself away. Not just my money, you want all of me. I give myself away. Why? So you can use me. I give myself away. He don't want your money more than he wants your heart. Come on, y'all. So I give myself away. Why? So you can use me. I love the next part. My life is not my own. He's the owner to you. I'm the manager, so what do I do? I give myself, I give myself to you. Woo! This means something different right now. Said, my life is not my own. To you. Wherever you're at, just say it. I give myself, I give myself, I give myself away. Here we are, God. You can have everything. So you can use me. I give my God is healing. God is repairing. He's changing thinking right now. God, we trust you. So you can use me. If you need to give God your life, it's the greatest offering you could ever give him. Like, like I remember saying, God, I'm no longer going to do my way. I'm going to do what you want me to do. And today, I believe there's hundreds, if not thousands of people that are in this room and watching online that need to give their life. Before you give a dollar, a cent, a dime, he doesn't want your money if he does not have your life. <laughs> this is true riches. You are. And God's saying, I sent my only son to die on the cross for you, for all your sins, for all your mistakes, for all your pain. And today, could you give me back what I gave you? And if that's you, I'm telling you, accepting Jesus Christ is the greatest decision you could ever make. It took me from being a liar, a manipulator, somebody who was addicted to pornography. I had all kinds of really bad stuff in my head and my heart that sometimes came out in my hand. And God said, with all of that, come here. I've made a way for you to be made right with me. And all you gotta do is accept my son, Jesus. When I see you now, I see him. So everything you did, I don't see that no more. I see you. What I'm asking you is if you want to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, today is your day of salvation. If that's you in this room, watching online, if you're here and you're saying, Pastor Mike, I want to be included in that prayer. On the count of three, all I need you to do is shoot your hand up. There are people that are coming. There are people that are already saying, this is me. They're my sister right here. My brother came to the front. My brother right here. Listen, I ain't even said three. So one, you're making the greatest decision of your life. Number two, I'm proud of you, but your name is going to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Three, lift your hands all over this building and watching online. Oh, Transformation Church, this is why our church exists. This is why we give. This is why. Come here. I'm going to touch this brother. And I'm going to pray with him. This man, before I even made a call, something drew him. I feel this is what God is doing for many people. He's drawing. He's drawing you back to his heart. He's going to heal you. He's going to heal you. It's hard to believe right now, but he's about to heal you. And I feel the presence of God. There's healing happening. Somebody come stand with my sister right here. There's healing happening right here. There's healing happening in this atmosphere, in this place right now. We're going to pray this trans. I feel the presence of God, y'all. There's a lingering anointing. We're going to shut the stream off here in a second. But there's healing in this room right now. For everybody giving their life to God right now. A Transformation Church, we're a family. Nobody prays alone. 
We're going to pray this together. Everybody say, God, thank you for sending Jesus just for me. Today, I give you my life. Change me. Renew me and transform me. I believe you lived and you died and you rose again so I could experience freedom. And today, I give you my life. Take me and use me for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's rejoice with those who prayed that prayer. God's going to heal you, bro. The enemy's had his, his arrows pointed at you since you were as a young boy. And I see there being abuse. I see the enemy literally trying to ravage your mind. And even speaking things that you are not trying to know this is who you are. You are not what you did. You are not what you did today. The enemy's power over your mind is broken. I need the church to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I need y'all to pray, y'all. This is serious. Father, I thank you that in the name of Jesus, the healing that he's been longing for is not in my hands, Father. You just said to touch and agree, Father God, that you would do the work, Father God. So today I'm praying for him. But Father, you're, you're renovating his heart. And I thank you, Father, that the pain of the past is about to become his platform in the name of Jesus. That he is damaged, but he is not destroyed. Thank you, Father, that you have value that is intrinsic on the inside of him. And today is his day of deliverance, God. And as I touch him, I touch every person, Father, that's believing for healing. If you need a healing in your mind, in your heart, in your body, Father God, I thank you that this is a point of contact. But we're believing you, Father God, for miracles, signs, and wonders. Have your way in Jesus' name. Something is happening in this atmosphere. Somebody's going to stand with him and y'all need to pray with him just for a little longer. God is starting this thing with money, but he's coming for your whole life right now. I feel the presence of God. Will, come pray with him. Just as our final act, can, can we sing this part? So take my heart and mold it. Take my mind and transform it. And take my will, conform it. Oh, yours, yeah. yours, oh. Oh, Lord, Just lift your hands Lord, and take my heart, take my heart and mold it, and take my mind, take oh, my mind transform it, transform it. Whoa. And take my will, take my conform it. ain't about money, God, it's about my heart. Give, give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I need all my staff pastors, staff ministers, I need y'all to come down here. Um, something's about to happen. Yeah. Can you use me? Move, move, move these. I give myself away. Yeah, move that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do whatever you want to do, God. So you, so you can you Y'all tell the prayer team to come into the building. Wherever that, that prayer team is, tell them to line up against the back. People need prayer in this place today. I give myself away. So you, I feel the presence of God. Something's breaking in here. I give myself that are broken, hurting, and lost. I give myself away. Whatever you want to do, God. So if 
you need prayer in this room, I want you to get to this altar. There are more people coming to the back. If you just want to worship in this moment, something is changing. Hey! Okay, this is what we're going to do. Um, tomorrow is Monday night prayer for everybody that's in Transformation Nation. The presence of God is stirring right here. God started with money and, and he, he's, it's really heart surgery though. <laughs> There's something that God's doing. Whether you've been in a poverty mindset or a pro po prosperity mindset and God wants to get you to the place he wants you to be. Um, on Transformation Online, Transformation Nation, tomorrow night, I'm telling y'all this, we're taking prayer requests all Monday night prayer. So I need you, we're gonna create a graphic, whatever you need prayer for, we're praying by name. I need as many people to get in here tomorrow night. We are going to begin to pray for people's breakthrough, financially, in their family. We're gonna pray for health, we're gonna pray for any. I feel like God's just opened up something in this place and we're gonna pray with the people who are in this building. There's not enough people yet, so just linger. The team is gonna worship and we're gonna just lay hands. We're gonna pray. If you need to go, you can go. But God is about to do something. I feel like this is gonna be the start, oh my God, of real transformation happening in your life. God started with your money, but it's gonna affect your entire life. So, so I want you to know the atmosphere is gonna keep going in this place. And if you need to leave, go. Get your children. We're gonna be here tomorrow night, but Transformation Nation, start writing your prayer request in the chat. I want you all day tomorrow and join us right here at 6 p.m. tomorrow night. We are going to pray for miracles, signs, and wonders. I believe that God is about to do a transfer. There is something about to happen in here. Your faith is about to be ignited in a new way. We are not playing with this. Wherever God wants to move, however God wants to move. We want to be whatever He wants us to be. And there are people that are coming into this place to be transformed. Father, we give you everything. We thank you for what you did today. We thank you that we can be trusted to manage all that you've given us. And God, we declare transformation is coming to your house. Come on, just hands lifted all over this place. Father God, we surrender. Whoa, I feel the presence of God. We surrender it all, Father. We surrender it all, God. Whatever you want to do, however you want to do it, we surrender it all, Father God. Have your way, Father. Have your way, Father God. Have your way, Father God. We trust you, God. Just one more time. We're going to say, take my heart. Take my heart. So take my heart. Take my heart.
just the start. This is just the start. Something's changing. It's just the start. Don't let fear keep you. Don't let, don't. <laughs> I, I feel like some people, you feel that, that, that thing you feel on the inside, that's the Holy Spirit. He's trying to change some stuff on the inside of you. I know what you said. I know what you blogged. I know what you posted. And God's saying, but I want to do something in you. He's changing you today. Father, continue to do the work. Even when you log off, let the Holy Spirit continue to do the work. Deliverance is happening. <laughs> Healing is happening. God's changing you for his glory. I know they don't pray in church no more, but at Transformation Church, there are people that actually need healing and deliverance. This is a hospital for the broken. This is not a club for perfect people. Father, continue to do this work. Next week, we're going to a whole nother level. God's about to do something that's going to blow your mind. What I'm asking you to do is all this week be open to what God is going to do on the inside of you. This is starting something, that thing you're feeling, that's, that's God trying to do something brand new on the inside of you. Next two weeks are going to be life changing. But let God do the surgery this week. I love you. Until next time, go out and live a transformed life. Thank you so much for watching this message. We pray that it encouraged you. Our vision is to represent God to the lost and found for transformation in Christ. And if you would like to partner with us in giving, you can text GIVE to 828282 or visit us on our website. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, and check out our other sermons as well. Our service begins every Sunday at 1045 a.m. Central Standard Time. Now go out and live a transformed life.